Well, C3 AI is announcing a new partnership with Bloom Energy using C3 AI's reliability suite to help broaden the scope and precision of Bloom's product monitoring technology. For more on this new collaboration, we want to bring in Tom Siebel. He's the C3 AI's CEO and chairman, as well as KR Sridhar. He is Bloom Energy's founder, chairman, and CEO. Great to see both of you. Also have um, Madison Mills joining the conversation as well. KR, let me start with you just in terms of we do, we've been talking more and more where there has been more of a focus on Bloom Energy recently. When we talk about this energy transition, what ultimately is needed uh, as we talk about the rapid adoption of AI. So why does this partnership make sense? And ultimately, what does it do for your business? So uh, three things out here, right? The first is as our economy is growing, as we are digitizing everything, as transportation, like in your previous segment, is getting electrified, mm -hmm. as AI and data center growth goes up, the grid is not able to keep up with the demand that there is. And one of the ways to solve that problem on a quick time to power is using distributed systems like ours to bring clean, reliable electricity right where the customer needs it. That's what Bloom does. Now, if you think about our deployed uh, fleet, Think about it as almost 20,000 small independent power plants operating in over 200 sites and producing enough power for a million homes. And imagine from each of these million homes, a thousand data points coming in all the, you know, every single day. So a billion point, you know, data points are coming in with which we can make sense and try to optimize better and make the products more efficient, uh, last longer for the customer, and uh, provide a better benefit. Now with the AI platform, Tom and I have been talking about this for a very long time. Finally, the time has come when we can take those billion data points from all the digital twins of things coming out of our power plants and optimize it better. That's what we're working on, and it is super important, not just for us, once we prove this out, the future of electricity is going to be a lot of distributed generation, unlike one centralized power plant. This can be a model that everybody else can use. Well, Tom, I want you to come in here because as KR was just mentioning, C3 can really help its customers aggregate a lot of data, but the AI hype cycle has kind of quickly moved on from traditional uh, use cases like aggregation of data into a desire for uh, new products that can come from generative AI. So I'm curious from your perspective, what is the path for C3 AI to become a generative AI play and how long do you anticipate that taking? Uh, well, I think we're well beyond the AI hype cycle, and now we're in the AI implementation cycle at massive scale. And one of the largest applications of AI is to optimize the global grid infrastructure, and the grid would be the largest, most complex machine ever built. And so we could use AI to deliver cleaner, more reliable, safer energy into the hands of more satisfied customers at lower in, in environmental impact. That being said, kind of globally, the people who operate the grid are kind of failing you know, due to policy decisions. And the availability of power is becoming critical in Europe and in, in, in North America. So where we have, you know, the kind of work that KR is doing with these fuel cells, now we have, you know, tens of thousands of fuel cells are part of this grid infrastructure and to optimize that infrastructure, we need to apply AI. Now, Generative AI, how big is that? It's huge. I mean, the the you know, the you know, the you know, the market for uh, you know enterprise AI applications in power, in utilities, in oil and gas, defense, intelligence, manufacturing, that is probably you know order you know growing to order of a trillion dollar industry. Generative AI is another trillion dollar industry on top of that. And we're applying AI today, generative AI today in defense, in intelligence, in power, in power distribution, utilities like uh, uh, Con Edison, New York Power Authority. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing working with generative AI with KR at Bloom Energy. And so uh, generative AI changes everything. Yeah. And uh, I, But I do think we're well beyond the hype cycle in in, in AI. And now we're in the large scale commercial and industrial implementation cycle.
Really quickly, Tom, I know you've got a lot of revenue coming in from defense, like you mentioned. Where are you seeing more demand, from commercial or from government sectors? Oh, commercial is by far our, our largest business. I mean, commercial is, uh, you know, energy, oil and gas, consumer packaged goods, travel, transportation. Um, you know, that would be uh, government services. That's 80 percent of our business, state and local. But uh, I would say defense and intel might be 15 to 20 percent of our business. That being said, it is rapidly growing. I believe we announced last quarter that year over year growth was order of 100 percent. So it's one of the, you know, as we uh, kind of reinvent Okay, the, the, the military complex uh, in space, subsurface, cyber, okay, uh, contested logistics, what have you. Uh, AI is very much at the center of that. And we're uh, very active in participating with the Pentagon in helping them get these services where they want them to be. Well, given that in our final minute, Tom, I'm curious, I know you've talked about how we're essentially at war with China here. One minute left. Talk to me about how worried you are about that headwind moving forward. Be afraid. Uh, be, be afraid. These people are competent. They're well financed. They're well trained and they're focused. And uh, and they are, you know, this idea pure evil exists. OK, it does exist. OK, and, and these people, they plan on dominating us in, you know, in A.I., in chips, in cyber, in space, in subsurface, and, uh, and AI is very much at the heart of this plan. And so we are in an open uh, AI warfare with, with China today, and you know, different companies are, are, are partnering with different players. We are partnering with the United States Department of Defense and their allies, and we're proud to do it, and, uh, and hope that we win. But I would, you know, be afraid. And this is this is this is a very, very important, indeed, an existential issue. All right, Tom Siebel, we wish you had more time. Thanks so much for joining us. And of course, our thanks to Care Sweetheart as well. We look forward to hopefully having you back on Yahoo Finance in the in the future. Appreciate your time.